I am Nicolas Schack. I am the quality and conflict supervisor of the company C Conflict subdivision of the company Cordeal, or rather say the Cordeal Group. Today I will talk with you guys about the project we did with the Alborg Extreme. It was a project for the Brussels Airport company, and we had to make for this new head office. We had to make cluster elements. And the project was in 2020 September. First, I would like to say a few things about the Cordeal Group. It's founded in 1934 by Gisela Cordeal, Belgium. It's still 100% family owned company. It has an annual turnover of approximately 800 million euro. It has 1,600 employees, offices in four different countries, and credentials in eight different countries. As you can see on the top right, that's the location of the Belgium, one of the Belgian uh, divisions of the Cordeal Group is Cordeal Tempster, and that's also where the head office is of Cordeal Tempster, and it's also one of the locations uh, of our company C Concrete. Cordeal has offices also in the Netherlands. The head office in the Netherlands is in Zwijndrecht. Then we also have in the Netherlands the Company Helen, real estate and construction. Then we have office in Vlissingen. Then we have an office, uh, office collection in Terneuzen. And the last office we created was in Amsterdam. This slide, you can see a uh, different type of credentials that uh, is provided by Cordial Nederlands. So we make industrial buildings. We make uh, buildings uh, for the, yeah, again for the industry, but uh, especially located for warehouses. Um, then we make also the apartment buildings. This one, the, the one you see, the office towers fair plan, it was a renovation of one of the towers there. Then we also had in 2020, we had the child syndrome, the health plus. It was a really important uh, building because it had to be as uh, energy neutral as possible. Here you can find some upcoming credentials of Cordell Nederlands. You can see it's uh, a lot of big projects at the, at the moment. Some of them are already in development. Some of them are already even construction, like Bogis uh, Rotterdam collection. Then the Brick Tower in Amsterdam is one of the buildings that's going to start soon. Then, of course, you have the Ensemble in Amsterdam, and it will also start up soon. <clears throat> Here you can see what the company C Concrete uh, can provide. Concrete is a company that will make annually around 40,000 cubic meters of concrete. We also have our own reinforcement department where we can make approximately around 20,000 ton of reinforced uh, reinforcement. Then um, we have the BNR, the CN, the Como certifications. The range of products you can see also in this slide, you can make the normal reinforcement. You can make reinforcements to put in the pre-cost elements, but you can also make the reinforcement that needs to be delivered to the construction site. Then the different types of elements, you make beams, columns, pre-stressed floors. It's in our seat pass system. Then we have walls, we have balconies, we have facade elements, exposed concrete is also one of our things. Then the specials, and the specials, it's yeah. We try to make everything that's possible to do with concrete and that our customers desire. In Belgium, you can have, we have two uh, departments of sea concrete. You have one in Tempster and you have one in Brussels. Please make sure to check our website. So there you can see all the projects we already did, projects we're going to do. And 
yeah, a little bit more about what C concrete and the protein group stands for. Here you can see the design we got from uh, Archipelago architects, and they asked us through Cordial Lucid Lusot if it was possible to make 34 cluster elements and four food walls in black concrete, but with a certain, yeah, certain uh, type of dimensions. And as you can see, the squares inside the cluster elements, they were approximately around almost 28 uh, centimeters. And the width of the the width of the concrete itself was around 77 millimeters. And the depth was around 150 millimeters. Here you can see the different types of elements or different types of cluster elements because not the, some of the cluster elements were a little bit different than the other ones. You can see we also have to make corner elements. And then, of course, the four full walls we also needed to make. As everybody knows, the yeah, concrete itself isn't only the challenge, but sometimes also finding the right type of formwork can also be challenging, especially when you need to make elements in ultra high performance concrete. So yeah, that's we that's why we started with search for the right formwork. First um, option we thought was was in the XPS formwork. But yeah, the problem was that you can create a form, a concrete uh, element in XPS, but not always, but most of the times it won't be as smooth as the client requires. That's why, because of the high aesthetic demands, but also because of the big amount of waste, because the XPS form work, most of the times you can't reuse it. That's why we yeah, didn't go with option one. Then we thought about option two, steam formwork. But yeah, steam formwork, it would it would have a high cost. And because of not only that it would uh, not only have a high cost, but it would also have uh, created a big amount of production time to create the steam formwork. Then we thought about, yeah, a wooden formwork, what we normally make, but we were a little bit afraid of because, yeah, we never worked with ultra high performance concrete. But at the end of the day, we stayed with the uh, wooden formwork. Why? Because we have our own uh, formwork making team in our steel concrete factory. And we also have one of our uh, subdivisions of Cordeal. Belgium is the wood, and it's a company who can provide us the right material and also a little bit of support. One of the reasons here yeah, we chose for the wooden format is because it's easily adjusted, especially when um, we have different elements and it can also be repaired when necessary. Here you can see two pictures of the order that was created then by our uh, sister company, Seawood. Yes, and of course, the second question we asked is to put color pigment into a premix that is in this basis white. That's the question I asked to Tom. Don't have this a lot on this budget. We discussed about yeah, the pigment addition. If you, the concrete itself will require a little bit more water, but yeah, adding more water is always something you need to watch out for, especially when you have concrete in that strain class. Then also, you should watch the correct dosing of the color because you make high statical elements and 
there isn't or there isn't much color difference allowed. So you need to always make sure you can dose the color correct. Then it's also better to use superplus instead of water because the amount of superplus will be uh, much lower than the amount of water you need to add. And yes, because of the all those different things we needed to do, we will probably lose a little bit of strength, but the loss of strength we would acquire wasn't so, uh, I would say, dangerous for the elements itself. <coughs> then the view of the element itself, yeah, adding black colors to the mix, black color, uh, black colors concrete is always a challenge to make, especially for the light performance. So how can you prevent the line performance? It's about um, preventing the line performance. It means that you, first you have to have good mix design, but yeah, that we got from Albor, so that's no problem. But also uh, optimal storage of the elements, especially in their young age. Here you can see uh, how we store the elements. And of course, we ask ourselves a question, uh, another question, what type of reinforcement do we need to use? Is it possible to learn normal reinforcement? Because of the yeah, dimensions of the elements, we were thinking about fixation and power. How are we going to do this? And will it be enough? Because we really didn't have a clue what type of reinforcement we should use. I called to many people and I know. And after the different calls, we came up with a solution here yeah, that we should search for the hybrid reinforcement. The hybrid reinforcement is the normal reinforcement in combination with fibers. Then we thought about yeah, you have different types of fibers. So which type of fibers? Because the cluster elements were placed outside. We thought about the possibility of the corrosion if we used steel fibers. And that's why we chose for the PPR fibers from master builders. As you can see, we yeah, did many different tests. Uh, the first mock-up we made was an element already with the correct dimensions because normally when we do projects like that or we need to make a, a mock-up, we most of the times make an element that's smaller but has the same uh, requirements necessary as a bigger element. But because of the difficulties we're facing here, we already decided to make an element that, was, that had the same dimensions as the elements we needed to make. As you can read, we found a problem when uh, creating the first mock-up. So by first calculation, we needed yeah, to create a hybrid uh, reinforcement. It was necessary because of the way of the lifting of the element, but also because of the way of the team mode. But yeah, as you could already read on the previous slide, we had difficulties to keep the uh, steel mesh we placed inside the walls on this place. That's why we were thinking if we can do it in a different way in team molding, is it possible to use 100% fibers? Because yeah, the first test wasn't good. And yes, we demolded the element on a different way, and because of the demolding on a different way, it was possible for us to use 100% fibers. Fibers we used were the master fiber 235. You can see the quantities, and then we made a cocktail or a mix of the fibers because we also used master fiber 400. 
in the last difficulty we were facing was the problem that when pouring the mock up, we had 60 bags of 25 kilogram to put in our concrete mixer. But our concrete mix and my mixer is uh, placed on the first floor. So it meant that every day our centralist needed to go, or our operator needed to throw in 60 bags of 25 kilogram. And yeah, how are we going to do this in our normal production? Because at that moment, we still need to make also our normal production. And that's why I went back to the people from Albor with that question, and they told me, oh, that's no problem. We can give you big bags. Then you can add a certain amount. You can add eight kilograms. And then you will have the requirements or the quantity you need to create one element. We were lucky that it was possible for us to work with the big bags because on the level where our concrete mixes are, we have grain and we could pull up the big bags with the grain and we could transport them to the mixer and open the mixer and put in the and empty the big bag inside the mixer. You can now watch a movie from our production. Yes, everything went smoothly. We were thinking about doing instead of the schedule that was created of pouring one element a day, we were thinking about pouring two elements a day. <laughs> At a certain time, we decided to do it. We produced then an amount of 1.2 cubic meters of the UHPC extreme. And the power produced by our mixer was around 40%, so it wasn't any problem for our mixers. We also let it know to the people from Albor and told, told me that creating such a batch of 1.2 cubic meters in one time wasn't that was something he didn't really knew if it was already ever being done. And yeah, whenever you think everything is going smoothly, <laughs> there comes another problem. What to do with the two full quarter panels? The original idea was to make the full quarter panels in our standard black concrete, our own mixed design for black concrete. But then we thought there would be a possibility that the black concrete, our black concrete, wouldn't have 100% same color as the approach mix used for the cluster elements. So that was a problem yeah, we were facing at the end of the production. So yeah, let's go beyond extreme. The total quantity we produced then at that moment to create those full corner panels was 1.6 cubic meters. The power produced by our mixer was 95%, and also we reached the, almost the limit of the capacity of our grain cubicle because we have a grain cubicle that can fill two cubic, or rather, say that can take two cubic. You can see a picture of our uh, display in our operation room. You can see that yeah, it was really at 95% uh, of power. And you can see that the great cubicle was yeah, almost completely filled. <laughs> and of course, it's not only about the design, the development and the production. 
of these elements, but it's also what to do with the finishing, the transport and the placing. You also need to be a little bit, uh, how do you say, more careful than with the normal standard concrete, uh, precast concrete elements. So you could see the finishing. I'm really sorry I couldn't provide a picture of how the result was uh, 100%, but you could see in the boring stairs, you could see the fibers, but in the elements we uh, sent to the construction site. Before we sent them to the construction site, we melted the fibers that were visible on the pooling side. And also for, so yeah, you couldn't see so much fibers as you could see now in this picture. Then for transport, we tried to fixate them as good as possible and to place them as uh, protected as possible on the transport, because it would be really a shame to create so, uh, I would say it would be really a shame to produce and to develop such fine elements and then only by transport maybe damaging them. And also when placing the elements, the people on the construction side were um, very careful when they were placing the elements. And yeah, this is the result. At this moment, it's still one of my favorite projects. And whenever people ask me for a credential of the company the Concrete, then I will always put this project as first because this is a project where both of the divisions of C Concrete Belgium worked for, not only Tempster. But also see concrete fusels. See concrete fusels made a lot of the uh, grey concrete uh, precast elements that were uh, necessary for the structure of the building. And see concrete tempster made yeah the claustra elements, but not only the claustra elements, also the facade elements that were washed. So that was also an exciting uh, part of the building. This is the end of my presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if there are any questions, you can always contact me on my email address. You can find it below.